in just like that. Huh. Must be an old wire. I choose love over an internship. Of course you can. Why do you care what anyone thinks? Because you're not anyone. You're you. Hello everyone, the December Review here, back again with the final episode for season one of And Just Like That. Spoilers are ahead, so make sure to check it out only on HBO Max. It's been a fun past few months as the SATC world has returned. This new chapter brought with it some changes, both good and bad, but the heart of the show stayed consistent with the bond of our now three lead characters lighting the way for its fan base all these years later. I want to mention right off the top here that I owe a big and huge thank you to the YouTube channel Sex in the City Clips. They shared all of my videos each week with their vast community, and their influence on this channel was immense. I gained many more views than usual and a bunch of new subscribers, all thanks to them. So thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. If you are one of those new friends, thank you for stopping by. This channel can have a mix of mainstream and horror-related content that I try to balance out for everyone. And while we wait for Season 2, please leave a comment on what other shows you would like to see discussed here. Okay, so let's get down to business. For Episode 10 entitled Seeing the Light, we open up with round three between Carrie and Peter, which manages to go off without a hitch, but for Carrie, also without a spark. Carrie also has a meet-up with John's brother, who requests his ashes to go with him. And as we approach the one-year anniversary of the loss of Big, this kicks off a string of events where Carrie's lamp starts acting up, and she's convinced it's John sending a message. After a dream she has, Carrie decides that their bridge in Paris will be his final resting spot. Meanwhile, Jay invites Miranda to meet her family for dinner, but the event takes a turn as it's actually a gathering for Jay to announce that they are going to California to film a TV pilot. Jay asks Miranda to join them, so she nixes her sought-after internship and lets Naya know she's finishing her class remotely. For Naya and Andre, after the events of last week, which saw the pair clash on whether to continue to start a family together, the couple has decided to take a bit of a break, allowing some space away from each other to see if that can help bring their opposing views into focus. And for Charlotte, well, it's all about Rock's bot mitzvah, or they mitzvah as it were. No stone was left unturned as all the stops were pulled to create an elaborate and memorable ceremony and celebration. From coffee hour to a full candy bar to hipster and traditional challah bread, the biggest they mitzvah event of the century ends up with one small problem. Rock decides they don't want to do it, so the day becomes Charlotte's as she steps in and performs the service herself. I must say the rabbi character for the they mitzvah was excellent, and so was Harry trying to bribe Rock to have her service. What do you want, Rock? Hmm? You want an Oculus? An Apple Watch? What's it gonna take? What I love about well-made shows such as AGLT and its final season episodes is the anticipation the show brings with it. You never really know how it's going to end and that build-up can be a thrilling experience for the viewer, especially during the final 10 minutes. Here that feeling was ever present as the storyline started wrapping up one by one until we hit the credits. There wasn't anything too surprising per se that happened here, it was mostly a continuation of all the parallel stories during the season's run. It seems Seema has found her missing piece with her new friend, tidying up her storyline quite well as she explores the new relationship. Her quick convo with Carrie left things off on a nice touch. She asked Seema not to forget about her. Naya and Andre bow out separated for now, but you can tell with how well they clicked early on in the season that their alone time will most likely end with a reconciliation. Anthony once again gets some of the funniest moments first with a one-on-one -on -one with Rock when he learns that they are way behind on their studies. His stern talking to was pitch perfect Anthony, and he also pops in at the ceremony to deliver the bread in another funny scene. I mentioned this in my last week's episode and I'll say it again. He deserves his own show. Anthony in the city. Make it happen, HBO. 
Do you even own a flat shoe? Charlotte continues to shine and gets a great moment to poke fun at herself when Lisa asks her if she's insane for having that candy bar. Well, she proclaims she passed insane like three months ago. She sure has, and her character really stood out for me during the season. I didn't feel like Charlotte changed much from the person we remember on the original show, but her surroundings did. No longer playing the field or having to do battle with the likes of Trey and Bunny, Charlotte has settled into her family with Harry and those changes brought with it new challenges. The season spent most of her time throwing one new issue after another at her. The beauty of the Charlotte character is that she is so wonderfully overprepared for any situation that she can expect that when she is met with a circumstance outside of those parameters, it's almost like a wire gets cut and she flies off in the short circuit mode, usually with a comedic outcome. With new twists to deal with every week, these moments built up quickly for Charlotte, and she was able to pull from those experiences and learn from them while still maintaining her fairy tale viewpoint. Hats off to Kristen Davis for her excellent work in the season. Miranda's journey was a bit more complex. She has another great semi-argument with Carrie here, where after she tells her of her plans to go to California, she has the right to make these new choices in her life, just as she can change them back again if she so desires. Well, while that notion of trying to put some things back together isn't entirely up to her, she is entirely correct to stand up for what or who she believes in, even if that appears to be so different at times than some can handle. Following the show along with being on social media, you couldn't help but see the backlash that Miranda as a character faced during the season. I always felt that this was a bit unwarranted. Yes, the show went out of its way to paint Miranda in such a different light than what fans remembered, and I was unsure of that direction as well at the start. But the end game was always for these people to evolve and continue on with what life throws at them. For Miranda, it was a litany of new directions from her career to her marriage mixed with a few too many drinks. Her arc became clear. She went from following the rules to following her heart in a world of uncertainty. It might not always be the safe bet, it might not always be the right choice, but it will always be her voice that guides the way. Oh, and it was nice to see that familiar hair color once again. Miranda, I have known you for a hundred years. And? Am I not allowed to change a little bit? Or a lot? Or change back again if I feel like it? Do I have to follow my own rigid rules until the day that I die? I never said that. Then why do I feel like I can't go to L.A. without letting you down? If you want to go to L.A., go to L.A. Why do you care what anyone thinks? Because you're not anyone. You're you. For one Carrie Bradshaw, well, she certainly had enough to contend with herself. Samantha moving away, a podcast, a new book, a new apartment, back to her old apartment, back to her old apartment again, a new neighbor, a new friend, surgery, an old lamp, and all clouded with the haze and uncertainty of the passing of her husband. I must say that the wrap-up for Big was pretty well done even with the noticeable edits that were made recently. The whole thing regarding the lamp was very well constructed, as too was the music and voice cues throughout her dream and trip to Paris. Between the hello it's me and John letting her know she's free, it was a rather emotional ending to that narrative. Though I must say they should have had one of those bridge light posts blink when she was there on the bridge. It's a missed opportunity. In my first video I made some predictions for the show. Let's take a look to see how well I did. And it gives me an idea that somewhere around the final 10 minutes of the last episode, Samantha will appear back on the show. Oh, and we better see Aiden at some point. Okay, so I didn't exactly guess correctly. I knew it was just hope from a fan to see Kim surprise everyone at the end. I didn't expect it to actually happen, though. But I must say, when Carrie was in Paris texting with Samantha, that tension was great, and I was holding out hope. But after reading some recent interviews today with Sarah and Michael Patrick King, it doesn't appear as if a reconciliation is much closer than it was before. To be fair for Aiden, John Corbett said months ago that he was in several episodes, so I fully expected him to show up at some point. The creative team is even on record as saying he owes the fans an apology for lying about it. I find the whole situation very odd, but regardless, much like my baseball career, I was over in my predictions. So overall, I was a big fan of the new version of the show. 
They definitely threw a bunch of new ideas and characters at us early and often, creating a lot of buzz for the show, good and bad. That tapered off with the second half of the season, allowing for those concepts to slowly weave themselves to the season's end. Some of the overall highlights were the more emotional moments, particularly the scene between Carrie and Natasha, Carrie and Miranda after her surgery, and Carrie and Miranda again during the lunch outside Carrie's brief new apartment. Also, the ending of episode 6 was a standout. The acting and writing was particularly great in those moments, and the camera work from its various directors really used the New York scenery to its advantage at times, with wonderful flourishes of the city's landscapes. I can go on and on about more of my favorite moments in the show, and maybe soon I'll do just that in another video, so stick around for more SATC content down the line. The beauty of SATC was the way it was able to bring its characters' lives into our homes in a relatable way. Sure, sometimes things were a bit exaggerated, but its core audience became friends with these people, and it became must-see TV. As the years have passed, our lives have changed, and for Carrie, Miranda, and Charlotte, so have theirs. I'm grateful that the cast and creative team were able to open up the pages again to bring some much needed joy to the world by revisiting some of our friends that we hadn't seen in a while. I thoroughly enjoyed it and just like that, would highly recommend it and eagerly await the green light for season 2. Much like that Anthony spinoff, make it happen HBO. So Charlotte's ceremony went off as a success as she has a peaceful home life for now. Miranda's flying off with Jay to start a new chapter. And Carrie has come out of the other side of her tragedy with a new podcast and spark. So maybe the past is like an anchor holding us back. Maybe you have to let go of who you were to become who you will be. Thanks for hanging with me during season one. Till next time. Well, that's it for my very first podcast. I'll get better. So till next time, I'm Carrie Bradshaw and this is Sex in the City. I don't know if I want to quit that. I, I've never felt like that in my life. tell you something and you're gonna have a big reaction and I'm asking you not to okay did I kiss you hello yet I don't know what else you think is out there. I've met someone.